guys, Mark with Car Audio Fabrication. Welcome to another extended cut video. These videos are for those of you who have generously donated through the website or who have signed up here on Patreon to become patrons and help me build these projects. I really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, it was awesome because I actually reached a new milestone on Patreon, over $150 a video, which is huge for me. I was able to finally pay off my editing computer, which is Again, huge. Uh, having that computer makes me be able to edit videos that are way longer than my laptop could ever handle before. So I really appreciate that, you guys. Thank you again. I can't say it enough. On this project, I want to let you guys know a little secret, all right? I'm actually working on beta testing. And you guys have to keep this on the down low. You have to promise. But I'm working on beta testing a new tool uh, to create these body lines. So when I was making the video, I, I wasn't even really thinking about it and I didn't really film this part of it because I knew I was supposed to kind of keep it secretive for now. Um, but you know, one, once this tool is ready to be released, once all the beta testing is done, I'm definitely gonna hook you guys up and let you know how to use it. Um, but I've already said too much. In this LED side lit plexiglass tutorial, you're gonna see how we make this large ring more in depth than what I showed in the normal video, how we make the small ring. I'm gonna show you guys um, some precision router bits that we use so that we can actually get this perfect 16th inch gap between these two pieces. Um, and I'm just gonna show you guys a lot of more in depth than what that quick video showed on YouTube. So, I hope you guys enjoy. It's 20 feet. 20 feet, I can't talk. It's 25 minutes of awesomeness. So stay tuned in and enjoy. All right guys, I'm gonna start just like I always do with making some template shapes. So here I have half inch MDF. I'm gonna use this as my base. This is a scrap piece I've saved from some time ago. I don't think I'm gonna get too much more use out of this. But I am just going to trace the overall outline for rough cutting. Time to rough cut. All right, so you can see here that I have my baseboard, which is made out of half inch MDF. And then I have this insert, which is actually made out of three quarters MDF. And the reason for that is it's gonna sit about here and I actually have quarter inch plexiglass that I'm gonna side lit, or side light that I want in there. And then this piece will fit down within there. And once again, that's made out of half inch. In order to prepare these for the router, we will do our normal sequence of applying them with the double sided sticky tape. If you're wondering why I have this piece here, I actually messed up one time and the bit chattered through this. So I added this piece of tape um, just to smooth it back out. Line everything up. All right, so we have our three pieces all ready to go and be routed. Let's load up the flush trim bit. For this, I'm going to be using my Mobile Solutions Bit Tray Kit. It has a rabbiting bit as well as a flush trim bit. And you can see there, it's the Car Audio Fabrication Edition. I'm going to start with just a straight up flush trim bit. Now notice that I keep my hands on the workpiece until it's completely stopped, that's just for safety. Now you may have noticed when I made this piece that I actually only flush trim the inside and not the outside and there's a reason for that because this is a straight up flush bearing right now. So I've already flush trimmed this piece and what I want to actually happen 
is I want this piece to fit within this piece. But the way that the smart templates are designed, they have 3 16 of an inch between them um, from size to size. So the thing is, I want to have a 32nd of an inch for each layer of vinyl that will be on these two. So I'm going to have one layer of vinyl here, one layer of vinyl here, so two 30 seconds, which is a 16th. So because this is 3 16 of a gap right now, what I could do is add an eighth to that, which means I'll be leaving a 16th, which is exactly what I need. So what I'll do, rather than just using a straight up flush trim bit, I will use my Mobile Solutions Bit Kit here. It's a little cold, that's why my fingers are like, ooh, shaking. But anyway, I can see that easily, okay, I want to oversize this part of it by an eighth of an inch. So I pick this bearing. So what I'm going to do, make sure that my router is unplugged. That was the dust collection turning on, it's definitely unplugged. I always double check like that. There we go. Make sure you don't lose this, this screw. Let's do that, pull off our bearing. And I've actually, I've had a discussion with Brian Schmidt, the designer of this, um, to make a location for this bearing when you take it off. That way you don't have to worry about losing it. So you put this little bearing protection plate on, put the bearing on, and apply the screw. Just make sure it's nice and snug, doesn't take much, and that's it. to see that even though normally there would be 3 sixteenths of an inch on this piece, see how it has a slight overhang? When we fit it in, there's only a sixteenth. Yes. And I... So this is the 3 quarter inch piece obviously, so I just want to show you guys that this fits perfectly within there. And because I've oversized it, it's exactly a sixteenth larger. Now obviously you have to account for this when you're doing your rough cutting. I should have mentioned that earlier, but now you know. Alright, so now what we need to do is actually lay out our paint. And it's always important that we take into account all the symmetry that we possibly can. So I should have made these marks uh, before I took the template off, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is just make dots. These templates have uh, conveniently have these alignment lines, which is very important for our symmetry. So I've made those dots like so. I'm going to take a straight edge, and I'm going to draft a line down the center, just like that. All right, now I've also made alignment lines on this piece, you can see here. What this allows me to do is know that I'm lined up on the center. Just like so, line up the bottom. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be doing things a little bit different than what you've seen before. So I have this 3 quarter inch thick piece, right? And normally you guys have seen where I'll use the foam tape around here in order to account for that transition gap uh, because it's a 16th inch thick which is perfect for vinyl on vinyl. But my foam tape is only a half inch tall. So I'm going to show you guys some awesome water bits 
that allow me to take off a 32nd of an inch at a time in order to compensate for that. All right, now what we need to do is just simply protect it with normal painter's tape. I'll straddle the middle just like so. That's what she said. And go around. So, so you get back to the other side, just right. Now this side seems to have a little bit more coverage. I want to make sure I cover that part too because it's exposed and body filler will undoubtedly get on it. While we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to prepare this innermost template piece. Now you can see I've already used a 45 degree chamfer bit on the inside. That just kind of gives it a nice artistic look. But what we're going to want to do is add a rabbit on the inside of this piece um, so that when we wrap it, that edge of the material will not be able to be seen. We're not worried about putting a rabbit on the outside perimeter because that's going to be a surface that's going to be contacting another template as the two piece together. So the vinyl will come up to here, but we'll cut it at this edge. So we don't have to worry about having a rabbit on each side, just the inside. Now I know that I want to have a 3 8 inch rabbit. That's a perfect size. Um, since this is 3 quarters inch thick, it goes half, halfway into it. So you can see I need a rabbit of 3 8 So I've already selected the bearing here. I put it on my rabbing bit, and we're going to go ahead and get it loaded up into the router. Now once again, you always want to sit it down in, and then pull up just a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, like so. Just finger tighten it. And then, we will just make sure that's nice and tight. It only needs to be snug. You don't have to go overboard with how tight it is. So that's nice and snug. And we'll lower this back down and get ready to go. Now because this rabbiting bit is so large, I want to make sure that the dust is still pulled away from it. So I'm going to use one of my larger inserts here. This two and a half inch insert comes as part of a kit that is also available at Mobile Solutions. So we have that loaded in there. Now what I'm going to do with a rabbiting bit, since there's a lot of moving mass and it's taking off quite a bit of material, you want to be safe and just make minor cuts at a time. Now I've already unplugged this. If I turn my switch on right now, it's off. So I don't have to worry about touching the bit like I just did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it until this goes in, so there it is, so I know right where I'm at. So every revolution of this is, uh, let's see, a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to go up a sixteenth because I want an eighth overall. So we're going to do two individual passes. So that's a sixteenth of an inch right there. And again, I could probably just rip it the whole eighth inch right away, but I like airing on the side of safety. All right, let's get this thing plugged in. 
Make sure the switch is off first. All right, here we go. I should also point out that using the rabbiting bit, you want to change your speed because it's a bigger overall diameter. All right, now that we've went around one time and made a 16th inch depth cut, I'm gonna unlock the spindle. And we're gonna come up another 16th of an inch. We lock the spindle. And we're ready to go again. And here you can see we have our eighth inch depth cut, three eighths inch in. Perfect for wrapping material. All right. I actually ended up having an issue um, with this, the smart fill template. Uh, because I was sanding here and this wasn't hard enough yet and I ended up screwing up the C pretty bad. So unfortunately I'm going to have to show you guys that on another project. But in the meantime I've got this all filled in. I'm going to start sanding this as well. Alright, now since we have this all sanded I'm going to use a screwdriver. And I'm not worried too much about messing up the template on this inside edge. Because I'm actually going to be rabbiting it away anyhow. <laughs> Now because when we molded this, it was with that only that one layer of tape, you can see that there is literally no room for vinyl. So what we can do is use one of the Sona's Fit Kit bits. Now what the Sona's Fit Kit bits are, is there are two different bits. One is oversized by 30 thousandths, and the other one is undersized by 30 thousandths, which is about the equivalent of a 32nd of an inch. So because of that, I need to gap this for two layers of vinyl here. So one, each pass of this is one layer of vinyl, so we're going to actually do two passes. I'm going to show you guys how that works. Now the key is here, we want this to be a little bit, the cut to be a little bit more than half. So what you can kind of do, really, is just line up the top of the bearing a little bit down. So you can see there, we're a little bit past halfway. I'm actually going to go a little bit further down. So we're lined up right about halfway. Now I'm going to make the first pass around the outside the bit. You can see that this has created a 30 thousandths ledge right there. So what I can do now is flip it over and cut again. So you'll notice once again we have this ledge. So this side is only a 32nd down, whereas this side is a full 16th down. So now what we want to do is flush trim in this part so it's also a full 16th down. All right, I've loaded up our average flush trim bit and I'm just going to lower it enough that it sits on that ledge. And with that, now put this piece in here, and you can see we now have a 16th inch groove all the way around, which is perfect. I should note that Sonus also makes this bit, which is 15 thousandths oversized. So you would use that if you were going to be painting a piece and inserting it so that it's not too loose. And just so you know, that's not rust on it, that's just, uh, that's just some sawdust. And these three pieces. We can do all the oversizing and undersizing that we need to do. Alright, now we have our overall layout. And you guys may remember that I made this piece three quarters of an inch, whereas this piece is only half an inch. The reason I did that is because I have this piece 
of plexiglass that matches this shape. I made this a while ago, otherwise I would show you guys how I made this. But it's very similar uh, to the process that's shown in the backlit plexiglass tutorial. So you can see here, I have this piece that simply sits in there, and then this piece goes over it, and with that's lit up, we'll have this edge lit. Now I'm going to show you a little bit different process, where this time we'll once again be using this rope light, or this ribbon light, but we want to have room for it to be in here. And in all honesty, because I expanded this piece to meet this piece, it looks like there's actually enough room. You can see there's actually plenty of room for it. But I still want to show you guys how you can make a precise little channel for it. What I'm going to do to start is I'm going to measure the height of it. I get the height there. It's 92 thousandths. So a sixteenth is about 60 thousandths, and an eighth is about 100, 125 thousandths. So what I'm going to do is account for this with an eighth inch gap. So if you see, if I go up to an eighth inch, which is 0.125. You can see, I'm going to have plenty of room for it in there. Now at the same time, I know that I want to account for the width this way of it, which that appears to be about 300 thousandths, or 3 eighths, a little under 3 eighths. So what I can do, I'm going to lock that measurement on this, so I can take it into account later. So what I can do here is use my Mobile Solutions Bit Tray Kit, and I'm going to make a rabbit of 3 sixteenths of an inch. It's a little over an eighth. So I'm going to swap out these two bearings. Allen wrench conveniently stored. Make sure you don't lose that. Make sure you don't drop your bearing. Put it back in its spot and I'm going to put this bearing on. And we're going to tighten her down. Make sure your bearing spins freely. So we're good to go. Can now proceed loading it in. Now again, whenever we're using the routing bit, we want to make multiple passes. So even though I could just set this up to make that full cut all at once, I'm not going to. I'm going to set it to do about half. Again, I know that this is unplugged, so I can touch the bit. And you know what, this is quite a pass, so I'm going to make, I'm going to do like a third of it actually. So that looks good right there. We'll lock it off. And we want to do this on the inside, of course. Move my tray out of the way. See, the groove is coming along nicely. So you can see I've made a cut that's about a third of the total depth. So I'm going to adjust our bit up now. So 
So you can see that's a little bit more. You can see, get in there. I need to just adjust it that final amount. So now I have a perfect groove that I can take this LED ribbon and I've cut a small sample just to show you guys because I still need to wrap this. I just want to show you just how perfect it is. So now we have a nice perfect groove for that LED to sit in. So there's our LED you can see right there. Put that in place. Put this in here, and you can see there's more than enough room for it in there, and it will easily light that up. All right, now, now for our main board here, we're also going to want one of our typical rabbited grooves in order to wrap the vinyl around the edges. So I've loaded up my bit. I have the bearing that will allow for a 3 8 inch cut, and I've raised it up a sixteenth of an inch we're going to go for an eighth inch overall with two passes. Okay, that looks good. So you can see that with that, we're completely ready for our vinyl wrapping. All right guys, I've got my three different pieces laid out here, and you can see each material choice that I have right next to it. I'm gonna be wrapping the main piece in this black vinyl, and the inner trim piece is also gonna be wrapped in that same black vinyl. I'm gonna be wrapping the inside of this part with black suede, and then this rim ring is going to be wrapped in the red carbon fiber vinyl. Now I just wanted to let you guys know that during most steps of this process, I probably won't be talking too much because I'm going to have my respirator on. <laughs> 